Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tyler Barker. I serve as the coordinator within the Office of Parent and Family Programs here at Georgia Tech. We would like to welcome you to our What's Buzzing at Georgia Tech webinar series. We are so thankful to have you here this afternoon. Uh, we also are thankful to have you just engage with us all semester. We know we've presented a lot of webinars to you, a lot of great information, and you've been with us every step of the way. So we're truly thankful for that. Uh, today we are talking about a very important topic, um, something that Georgia Tech truly promotes, uh, which is um, preparing yourself post your undergraduate career in, in terms of internships or co-ops or any extracurricular activities that can benefit you and set you apart um, when you get to put yourself in front of employers. So today we are joined by Michael Lauder, who is an outreach um, and communications coordinator for the Career Center. And so without further ado, I will turn it over to Mike. Um, if you have any questions for Michael uh, throughout the presentation, please feel free to utilize the Q&A chat box. Um, as we go along, uh, we know that this is a very important topic. Um, it's, a, it's a great topic, and so we want to make sure we get all your questions answered. So if you can just utilize the Q&A chat box, that would be great. If you'll give me one moment, we'll transition to the PowerPoint and then we'll begin. Hi everyone, this is Lacey. Um, Tyler somehow has mysteriously left the room. <laughs> so give us one second, we'll get him back in and we'll get the PowerPoint up. So just hold on one second. You gotta love technology. Hold on. You left the room. Michael, I'm going to send you live. So while while we're waiting on Tyler, um, just to kind of chit chat a little bit. OK, I uh, can go ahead. And, I can go ahead and get started and talk to everybody about everything uh, as we get our slides up. Of course, that's going to help, but I'm a good presenter. I don't have to have a backdrop. My name is Michael Lauder. I am the outreach communications manager with the Career Center. Today, I want to be here to talk to you about the resources and opportunities that we afford all students from their first day. What we are engaged in is simply success. Here at Tech, we place a premium on the idea that students should be able to scoop up that hard won education and walk right out the door and use it. Translation, do not wait until your senior year to think about going to work. I'm going to talk to you a lot today about the opportunities, how we are integrated within student life here. 
I want everybody to understand that it can be part of any student's process as they are enrolled in school, they're attending class. These are things that they can do in addition to attending class. So what I want to talk to you about is how we can do just that for your students. The Career Center at Tech has roughly 20 employees. We are involved in about three or four different groups. I'm going to explain to you today about those groups, how they will work, what you can expect from them. I also want to talk to you about how students can integrate all of this activity within their classes. So as soon as we get our slides up, I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of everything available to students here. Tyler is back, so he's going to get those up in just a second. Yep, give me about 30 seconds. We apologize about that delay. We'll just blame it on George P. Perdell doing a little bit of a joke this morning. <laughs> One thing I'm going to be talking to everybody about is how employers have had to reinvent themselves. Trust me, everybody, we've had to reinvent ourselves at Tech as well. So just like you have probably, I don't want to talk just about that. All right, Tyler, if you, I can have my next slide, please. This is the entrance to our building. We are in the Student Success Center, which is part of the stadium complex. We're on the east side of the building, of the complex. I'm showing you this entrance for a reason. We have 45 interview rooms in the basement of this building. Students make their way to this building during regular, ordinary, normal times. At this point, everything is done virtually. I'm going to be talking to you about that today, but we are very proud of the fact that employers love to come to tech. They want to recruit tech students. They like tech students. The reason that they do is because not only are students getting everything in their core courses within their major, they also are taught how to communicate that. So employers are really happy that when they're when they're getting a tech student, they're getting a complete package. What I want to do is kind of walk you through the divisions that we have in the Career Center right now, explain to you what it is that we do. One area is the Career Advising Counseling Group. All students are assigned a career advisor according to their major. Students can reach out to that person. They get on our website. They find out who that person is. They can converse with that person about any of these topics. Uh, career advisors can help with the fine points of applications, talk to them about career buzz, which I'm going to talk to you about today, things of that nature. So a career advisor is always a great contact for a student to have. They are not the same as the academic advisors that are in the departments. Also, we have career counseling. If a student wants to know if he or she is in the right major and what sort of jobs are available in that major, a career counselor can help. Uh, also can help somebody if they are not real sure they're in the correct major. So it's really nice what you have with both advising and counseling. We also have an employer relations team that does nothing but coordinate employer activities on campus and connect employers to student applicants. They are very, very busy. We are dedicated to the core. The core of our business is simple. It's what is called experiential learning. Experiential learning is nothing more than being working in your field while you're enrolled. You would either be a co-op or an intern. So this is the experiential learning program. Probably right now is a real good time for me to stop and define some terms for you. When students are enrolled and working within their field, working in an industry that's within their major, they are always interning. The verb is always interning. You will always be an intern. Co-ops are a formalized internship of three work rotations at the same company. A work rotation will be work one semester, school the next semester, work the next semester, school the following semester. There was a time when co-ops were more statusy, 
but those de that day is long gone. The co-op program here at Tech is roughly 106 years old. Co-ops began the first work that we had for co-ops in the early 1900s was as mechanical engineers and electrical engineers, and they made 15 cents an hour. The co-op program at Tech is recognized around the world. You get a gold seal on your diploma if you're a co-op, but companies offer internships to co-ops at about the rate of six to one. Co-ops have kind of dropped away because employers like the flexibility, the fluidity of bringing someone in for one work rotation. That having been said, many, many, many times students are invited to come back again as an intern and come back again. So in essence, it all works out to be the same thing. But I just simply ask that you not get caught up in the terminology. Students will always be interning. Next slide. If I may, I want to break through the third wall here and talk to you as a presenter about presentations. This slide was a great idea, everybody. Uh, if you can't tell what it is, it's a close up of the Ramblin' Wreck Auto. And because I wanted to talk about how all of this is cyclical, cir circular, thought, well, I'll use the headlamp. So it was great in rehearsal, but it's not so great when I see it later. But I want to talk to you about how students can literally claim their career. Beginning from day one, for instance, if a student is taking GT1000, he or she is going to have one of my workshops that entail resume crafting, cover letters, how to introduce yourself to a recruiter, and how when a recruiter then says, tell me about yourself, how to respond to that. If the student is not in GT1000, however, we sponsor workshops all over campus. We are embedded in all six schools. If I don't personally lead the workshop, I am supervising the workshop. Everything that we provide students in those workshops is actionable so they can start exploring. In addition, housing works with us and so students will have workshops in their dorm. Within their major, they will be hearing about career opportunities, information sessions, and career fairs within their school. So immediately, a student is going to be exposed to this. So consequently, as they start working through step by step to prepare, they can then begin to attend career fairs, information sessions, reach out to employers. There are many, many activities that they can take part in. Consequently, then they began to apply for jobs, go through the interviewing process. We have workshops to help with that as well. And then once they have gone to work, then they can think about how effective their work is. Is that the kind of work that they want to do? Maybe they need to come back to school and work on certain areas to make them a much better employee. So consequently, it all works around. There's not necessarily a beginning point with this slide or an end, but I like to think that you begin at, ex at exploring and end at exploring. So we are going to make certain that students are all prepared as much as they possibly can be. Next slide. I love this photograph. It's a picture of grads from two years ago. I particularly wanted to use it in the presentation. I think it tells you a lot something to make note of. I think one of the reasons that, that these people are so very happy, 82% of the graduating class this year had an accepted offer, which means 82% of the graduating class had a place to go to the day they walked. We think that is a really fine thing that tech students are able to do. One thing you should know, it ticks up 1% a year. For the past five years, it's ticked up 1% a year. Much of this is going to have to do, of course, with the fact that students have interned or co opted So some things that play into this. Students who intern are promoted three times faster their first five years of work than those who do not. Students who intern have a starting salary of $5,000 more than those who do not. 
I think you can see where I'm going with these statistics. It always pays off. What happens when a student, I tell students this all the time in my workshops, the instant that you can lay claim to the title intern or co-op, your credibility climbs enormously. What happens then is that other employers will see that these students know how work works. So even if they don't go to work for the company that sponsored them as an intern or a co-op, they'll go to work for someone just like them. It's almost ensuring success. Next slide. So I want to talk to you a little bit. I want to sell you a little bit on the value of co-ops and internships today, why you would want to do that. There are really three basic reasons why I always tell students that they would want to be an intern or a co-op. First thing, it helps them confirm they're in the right place at the right time. Occasionally, a student will come back from a work rotation and say, I hated that. I never want to do that again. Well, cool then you can take and figure out what other areas, what other direction within your major you want to go. And you all can take it from the old guy here. It's much easier to reinvent yourself at age 20, of course, than it is at age 40. Uh, one thing about it, because I spend my life talking to, to people about resume, resume content, rationale, all of that kind of thing, when a student goes to work as an intern or a co-op, they instantly are developing wonderful, beautiful, marketable skills. If you will think about it, a class is where you learn theory. Work is where you implement theory. So what this is gonna mean is their duties, all those bulleted lists that are in their resume, all of a sudden become that much more valuable to that student. Um, also, one thing about it, I always talk about money. The average intern makes from 19 to $31 an hour, depending on the industry. I talk to students about this dollar amount quite a bit. Sometimes I get kind of blank expressions. So I always say, if money doesn't matter to you, then maybe the word independence will. So it's a really fine thing to be able to make money while you are going to school. And of course, ultimately, it gets back to everything I always talk about, which is resume builders. Uh, a couple of things that I would like to bring up here that probably people are thinking about. Well, if I'm going to intern, does that mean that my GPA is going to be affected? Statistics show that students who intern or co-op actually, on average, have a tenth of a percent higher GPA than those who do not. I've thought about that before. I think probably it has a great deal to do with the Myers-Briggs profile of the person who is working. But also remember, class is for theory. Work is where you implement that theory. I think there works out to be a sort of synergistic relationship that way between work and class, and both of them are going to be improved through that relationship. Uh, also, some people wonder, well, if I'm going to work, have a work rotation, which is work one semester, work school the next semester, work one semester, school the next semester. Doesn't that mean I'm going to be at Tech a whole lot longer? Nope. What studies show is that students who begin interning as early as the summer after their first year, if they work every year, they're only at Tech on average one semester longer. So this can work, this can coordinate, this can be part of what you end up doing. Also, we have a number of students who study abroad. Of course, that program is suspended this year, but last year with students who studied abroad, 37% also worked in their host countries. Now, one common question that I get about working for a company in your host company while you're there studying, do I have to speak the language? Simple answer to that, nope, but it helps. Next slide. Um, I'm a communication specialist, which means I'm a liberal arts person. So consequently, I love to work with numbers. So I have a couple of slides here for you today that are going to do just that. Students are strongly urged once they get that job, intern or co-op, to register it with us. 
we are sort of the middleman in this process. We work for quality control. We can monitor everything. When a student also registers their job with us, there are certain tax advantages. We give them a placeholder credit, so everything remains the same at school, so you don't have to reapply. It's not going to affect scholarships or anything. Not all students register with us, but last year, 2,618 registered those job, those co-ops and internships. I can't really tell you exactly how close to the number it would be, but we think that probably this number is about 40 or 50 percent of the students who actually intern or co-op. Um, you will see by their by their final year, 75 percent of students at some point have participated in a co-op or an internship. Uh, last year we conferred, we offered 320 co-op degrees that you get that gold seal on your diploma. Now here's one thing that I, I, I have a little bit of an argument with. 49% accepted full-time employer employment with the sponsoring employer. I think it's higher than that. I've tried to delve into this number to try to see to th that we could get better, but this just simply happens to be the data slice that we have. I end up working a lot with students who convert their job from an internship to a full time. Uh, one thing I do, by the way, everybody, I have a workshop devoted to evaluating the job offer and negotiating salary. I've developed a real skill at helping students get more money on their first job. But what I end up dealing with sometimes are students who didn't get a full time offer from a company where they interned or co opt. All I do with them, it's very simple. I look through their resume, I talk to them about being able to talk about everything that they picked up at work, and then I say, all you have to do now is walk across the street and go to work for the competition. It really is that easy. The idea of interning and co-oping benefiting you long term means that it's going to ensure employment somewhere. Next slide. Uh, I want to stop here and talk about career fairs, the new normal, probably the questions that most of you are going to have about what's going on now. All of us have had to change everything we are doing. I'm coming to you today from my dining room, which has been my office since March the 24th. Think about where you are seated or reclined right now. All of us have, have had to reinvent ourselves and adapt. Industry and employers and recruiters also has had to adapt. During regular times, we have two enormous events on this campus fall and spring. The All Majors Career Fair, for instance, last year, it's two days every fall, two days in September. The event is so large that we have to have it at the Campus Recreation Center. It's the only building large enough on campus to hold it. Over two days, I had 9,000 students, 370 employers. Remember what I said when I started talking to you today, employers love to come to tech. Everything went virtual this year. So what that meant was the fall career fair this year had to be virtual. We had roughly one third the number of companies, one third the attendance over two days. Everything that's going to be happening at least the first six months of 2021 will be virtual as well. We will have a spring career fair January 25th and 26th. The Career Center sponsors the two major flagship events on this campus, all major career fairs, but there are career fairs in every in every college and in most majors. So they go on in addition to what we sponsor in the fall and spring. When people ask who do you work with, I say just about everybody. A number of years ago, I took the Fortune 500 list, double checked with the employers that we work with, and I found that we work with 460 of the 500 employers. We work with all types from startups, local entities, state and regional, national companies, global entities. We do profit, nonprofit, governmental agencies. We work with them all. 
So this year they have had to reinvent themselves. Everything has been virtual. Recruiters do not like it because they like being able to do that sort of retail politicking. They go to a, a career fair, they shake hands, they get to know the candidates, they get to, to gauge their aptitude. And so then they can, by interacting with them, they feel like they are getting the best candidates. They're now limited because they're dealing with a virtual reality. Somebody's face pops up on, on their monitor. Their face pops up on somebody else's monitor. They're somewhat limited. But everything is going to be the same for the first six months of the year. Now, probably all of you are wondering how has this affected hiring? So what happened in March when people went into shutdown, into lockdown mode, pandemic preventions, precautions. Uh, some companies rescinded offers. Probably about a third of the co-op and internships that were offered for summer were then rescinded by the companies. Uh, it, was a, it was one third for interns and co-ops, much, much less for full-time employees because companies didn't exactly know how they were going to handle it. The interns and the co-ops that they brought in almost across the board were done through distance. And so they had to figure out how to work with their new employees at a distance with the virtual reality. They're not real crazy about it, but they're playing the hand that they were dealt. I think that probably there is a great deal of buildup of need for interns, co-ops and full-time employees. I think that probably what's going to happen will be as soon as there is a vaccine, the dam will break and then companies will go back hiring at the level they were this time last year, probably even exceeding that. So how I'm looking at it is probably things are going to be somewhat suspended for the next few months, but then they are going to kick back in and probably kick back in with a vengeance. I'm a communication specialist and I can tell all of you this, not one company, not one, created a formal press release about their hiring changes. And to me, what that says, now not one company in any industry made a formal announcement about it. So to me, what that means is they're just waiting for this to be over so they can go back to normal. And I think the sooner, as far as companies are concerned, the sooner, the better. So for the first six months of the year, it's going to be this way, but I do think it's going to open up and people are probably going to be hiring a great number of interns, co-ops, and even full-time people because there is that pent up demand. Next slide. Uh, here's another number slide for everybody. You know how I like them. So average salary, $74,000. And of course, like I told you before, yes, one of my popular workshops is negotiating salary. So I'm always showing students how to argue for more money using concrete details. Uh, one thing about it, we have an online portal for jobs here at Tech. It's Career Buzz. All students are given an account. All they have to do is activate the account. Probably today I have about a thousand jobs posted up there. It's a job posting board. Students, when they activate their account, can look according to major job postings. They can figure out what jobs are out there. They can start applying immediately. Students can formally apply for any job that they wish as soon as they have a formal tech GPA, which comes the 1st of December. Uh, that 13,500 annual jobs, that's what we've been posting on Career Buzz over uh, the period of one year. Now, remember what I told you when we started talking today, we have 45 interview rooms in the basement of our building. We hosted 6,700 interviews last year. We will not be doing any in-person interviews probably until May or June of this year. Everything's going to be virtual, but you can see the volume and 520 plus employers will come to the all majors career fair and to other career fairs on campus throughout the year, fall and spring. 
Next slide. Career Buzz is what I was talking to you about. Um, here students can start acquainting themselves with job hostings, looking for things like qualifications, recommendations, responsibilities, requirements, all of that. So students can go through everything that companies are looking for. They can make certain that they've got that on their resume and in their cover letter. They can start applying for work immediately. Also, we have a resume book that they can use if they wish students can use. But when you activate your account on CareerBuzz, of course, you're going to get lots of notices about companies coming to campus, information sessions, workshops that we coordinate, that we lead throughout campus. You get a lot of information. Next slide. So it's real easy to find us, everybody. Career.gotech.edu. You can look us up, see everything that we are doing, see what our activities are. You all will also be able to start reading about the Spring Career Fair, which is January 25th and 26th. Of course, we are active. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of that. So we urge you to get in touch with us. All right, that having been said, what sort of questions do we have? Thank you so much, uh, Michael, for sharing that additional information. Really helpful. So now we'll move on to the Q and A chat box. What questions we have? I am a I am a parent. I was a freshman. When will be the most appropriate time for him to start applying to internships for the summer of 2021? I'm so glad you asked that question. The answer is simple, now. Um, we work with GT1000. If your student has been in GT1000, he or she has already encountered us in a workshop, probably me. If not, the student needs to work on his or her resume, make certain that they've got all of that down. They wanna find out how to introduce themselves to a recruiter. They should uh, activate their account on CareerBuzz. Start looking today. Take it step by step. Begin probably if I were going to enumerate this for you. Number one, have them activate their Career Buzz account. Number two, make certain the resume is in order. They can reach out to me directly if they haven't already been doing it this semester. They also want to figure out how to introduce themselves to a recruiter because they're going to be doing that in January. By the way, I have lots of workshops between now and then, so students can, yes, take part. They can find out what's going on by going to our website. But let me go back to my response to you now. Do it now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. And then uh, I'm assuming Career Buzz is the answer to where should he be? Where should he start applying and how? Yes. And the same instructions for this question, you know, I said before, make certain the paperwork's in order, that he or she knows about this resume and all the sections they're going to have. Uh, that they understand the place of a cover letter and a proper application, that they know how to introduce themselves. You will want all of you, I want to urge you to urge your students, if they haven't encountered the Career Center yet in their coursework this semester, make certain that they get online, see when our workshops are, and attend them. I am doing a boot camp session. I can tell of all of you this now, December 9th, 10th, and 11th, and I will be take caring, taking care of all of those topics. They'll find out that information on our website soon. Thank you so much for sharing that, Michael. And for the students who don't live on campus this semester, can they still attend the workshops? Absolutely. Everything I do is virtual. Everything everybody is doing is virtual. They will find out where it is. They will click. They have to register to attend. And then it's done through BlueJeans, and BlueJeans is a platform that tech uses. It has high security. So they will end up attending the event, and then after the event, they get the recording, the slides, and the handouts. No one is left out in this process. And uh, how has COVID-19 impacted the past summer and upcoming spring and summer internship slash co-op opportunities? My son. Okay. 
is a third year of chemical engineering and has not been successful landing a internship or co-op. All right. Number one, you want to make certain your third year has been to our workshops that I or someone like me has seen his or her resume. I will tell you what I tell chemies. There are a lot of great jobs out there, but a lot of times students have to find them. There are certain specialties, specializations that you're going to have within chemi. E. Have that student figure out what he or she is good at and pursue those jobs that way. Probably we are going to be bringing the hiring entity to campus, but that won't always be the case. So students need to be a little bit more proactive in this entire process. Yes, companies have slowed down. They pulled back one third of their interns and co-ops last summer, probably pulled back hiring from from rescinded about a third of the offers in the fall. Hiring will be down for spring, but I expect it to come back at a vengeance in in the summer. So student needs to start working on it now. If you want to have him or her get directly in touch with me, you can do that too. Great, great, great information. How uh, how are off campus students notified of workshops and career center events? Um, I guess you could talk about from the marketing. Most of that is going to come through a career buzz, but I also urge all students always to check our website. Um, for instance, this year on the left hand side of the website would be something called events. They can look up all the workshops there. there. Probably you're going to find out about it in Career Buzz, but not always. Great, and uh, we also too can be a great resource if you're not already subscribed to our parent newsletter. Uh, we're getting information from the Career Center out through there as well, and as well as our Facebook, which is the Parent and Family Program for the day Facebook uh, official Facebook page. Uh, so please be sure to follow that. If you are not following those, please just feel free to email us at parents at GA Tech. Dot edu and we'll get you connected. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, you've already touched on the timing. Um, do is it is it typical for first years to intern after their first year, or are they more readily available for second years and up? I'm glad you asked that question. As little as six or eight years ago, first year students couldn't get a job as an intern or a co-op. Companies were not necessarily interested in them and they would. Uh, a recruiter at a career event would just simply say come back in a year or two. Well, because of the work that I put in and many, many others like me, we started talking to companies about and taking resumes of first year students to companies and saying, yes, but look, they already have this exposure and this exposure and this exposure. They have the native intelligence. They have the aptitude. And companies have also discovered at the same time we were complaining and asking them to see our first year students, they were beginning to see the value in first year students. It's expensive to hire. It's ex truly expensive to train. So what happens when a company invests in a first year student with a great native intelligence, with some aptitude, with a little bit of exposure? They've got their hooks in you and they want to maintain that. So the answer to your question is yes. A first year student can get an internship after his or first his or her first year. In fact, I give all students a personal pledge in terms of working with their paperwork and interviewing. If first year students have a handful of skills, if they have a project or two that a recruiter is going to find of interest, if they're able to articulate what they're good at and how they want to use it, every one of them can have an internship next summer. Great, great. Thank you so much. Um, is there a specific uh, career fair for business majors? Uh, yes, they have one. You can reach out to Scheller and find out when that is, but uh, the All Majors Career Fair has a number of jobs for business administration students, uh, quite a number of them. Um, how can students, we've already touched on this first part of the question, so I'll go into the second part. 
How can parents learn more about the companies presenting at the career fairs? Our, our daughter asked us which companies does she talk to from a list, but engineering is not our field, so we were limited of help. Uh, we will have a list that we publish of participating companies usually two or three weeks before the event. So students can kind of go through it and figure out who all is there. Um, also, your students should reach out to his or her career advisor in the Career Center to get a little bit more help with that, to guiding them to specific companies that they would want to talk to. Um, there are many opportunities. You don't just have to be an engineer to get a job at a Georgia Tech career event. There are other companies that come in as well, but a lot of times uh, liberal arts or science students need a little bit of direction and a career advisor can help them with that. Do first years learn in their GT1000 class that they have a career council? They should. <laughs> if I've been workshopping them, they should, yes. Uh huh. But of course, all that information is on our website too, everybody. And um, do students receive emails and notification about the career fairs, or is it strictly through like the daily job digest? Uh, probably it's going to be through Career Buzz, but occasionally there will be universal email blasts about things. They might get something through their major or through their the college where they're enrolled. So it sounds like career buzz is just a great perfect tool. Yeah, to use. It, it, it is. It is. Do you know uh, if the students whose internships were rescinded this past summer are in the front of the line uh, for everyone? Everyone else is lying now. We tried to find that out. That's a great question. Whoever asked, asked that question, that's a great one. We tried to find that very thing out, and employers have been cagey with us. But I, I think probably because I've been in this business for a very long time, I do think that students who had their offer rescinded probably are going to be in the first group to be considered for fall or spring or next summer. Uh, some companies probably went so far as to guarantee that, but we've never been able to get anything across the board about it. I think this goes back to what I was talking about. Not a single company issued a press release either. I think they're having to make some of this stuff up as they go along the same way we are. Right. And then uh, this is going back to the rescinded internship. So if somebody had an internship rescinded this past summer and they're on, still on the hunt, they're a third year, should they just reach out to you personally or somebody in your office to kind of get the ball rolling for summer 2021? Would you recommend just scheduling a one on one or something like that? Uh, you can do that. Make certain that your paperwork is great, that you've been to the workshops, that you've done all that. Um, I'll plug that boot camp series I'm going to do December 9th, 10th and 11th. It's going to be everything you're going to need for the entire process. You probably want to do that. You can reach out to your career advisor, get online and find out who it is. You can reach out directly to me. Yeah, there are many things that you can do, but yes, I want everybody to be doing all of this now. And then um, what, what is the website again, Michael, for, for students to connect with the career counselor? Career.gotech.edu. Okay, or they can even go to Career Center. Perfect. Uh, will a student be able to connect with someone in the Career Center in January before classes start? Yes. Uh, what do you recommend for applying for jobs in the New York slash Northeast part of the United States? I recommend the same thing for applying for any job anywhere, anytime. Great paperwork, a resume with five or six sections at least, a well form, a well crafted formulaic cover letter, an ability to introduce yourself to a recruiter, an ability to engage in conversation with that recruiter requirements are going to be the same no matter where you want to go to work. Thank you, Mike. And you actually brought up a great point, something that I wanted to kind of touch on. If I can kind of put you on the spot really quickly, okay. you mentioned a lot about um, introducing yourself to recruiters, engaging, starting a conversation. Can you give us an example so parents can kind of see like 
what is actually being discussed and like maybe it's a conversation starter over Thanksgiving break they can just say hey I learned this from Michael this is how you should introduce yourself uh, for first year students it's actually pretty simple it's formulaic introduce yourself tell them your year your major then tell them why you chose your major that's always good but don't make it too complicated for instance like a mechanical engineer probably likes to know how things work or an industrial engineer likes efficiency or an industrial design major might be interested in the shape of things any number of things like that then you would tell a recruiter about a skill i am good at and it can be anything anything at all from coding to excel sheets to giving great presentations to writing wonderful reports any number of things and then and you start describing yourself according to your skills and you just give them a couple of things and then all you have to do is say what do you have for somebody like me <laughs> great great thank you so much um if you can just for clarification what is the name of the workshop you offer for salary negotiation and can you point us to a list of workshops you organize? Is there a website? Um, you probably are going to find everything on our website. I don't know since this is the end of the semester, everybody, and I've kind of gone through the entire litany of workshops that I do. The beginning of the semester is always going to be the basic stuff, resumes, introductions to recruiters, prepping for career fair. Then we go through everything, interview tips, cover letters, uh, networking, and then at the, then towards the end, I always do negotiating salary and evaluating the offer. I will be doing that a couple of times in the spring. I know uh, I've done it. I think I did it three times this fall, but yes, we will be doing it again. And students love it because because we help them get more money. <laughs> How can uh, this is a great question. Um, for first year parents, how can they apply now since they don't even have a GPA? Do they, uh, they can start. They can certainly start the process. They're going to have a GPA in about two or three weeks. Do they use their high school GPA? Michael? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I think probably everybody can understand the theme of my presentation today. There's no such thing as too soon. On a scale of one to 10, how important are computer programming skills? Example, JavaScript, Python, and landing an internship. It depends on the internship. It depends on the job. It depends on the company. But I would say anywhere from seven to 10. Yes, you're, uh, we have another question about uh, my son is taking the CS version of GT1000. Is he getting uh -huh. the same information about the Career Center and resume writing that he would get in a regular GT1000? Uh, my answer to that is simple. He's supposed to be because I'm because I'm pretty strong about this across campus. He should be sh he should be shown everything that we are doing in GT1000. There might be a couple of little differences, but no, he or she should be shown resume formulate cover letter how to introduce yourself to a recruiter what do, you, what do you recommend students bringing with them to career fairs resumes a card etc et i always tell students to have plenty of printed copies of their resume something to write on something to write with and they're going to be collecting cards uh, sometimes students like to to hand out their own cards to recruiters Recruiters are going to like to get it, but I think those cards get lost in the shuffle. I think recruiters are interested in collecting resumes and talking to students. That's the most important part. So I always tell students to take a minimum of 25 copies with you. And um, Michael, we know you, you mentioned earlier that you're in contact with a lot of employers. Uh, based upon your conversations thus far, is it looking like summer 2021 is going to be mostly virtual internship opportunities? Uh, I think by then that there will be distribution, enough distribution of vaccine that companies are going to want to go back to real in the flesh work, face to face work. It just depends on the vaccine and pandemic. Sure. But yes, 
there is pent up demand, everybody. I do kind of think companies are itching to get back to what they had last year. Um, does career services have staff members that are knowledgeable for industrial design majors? My son feels that career fairs don't usually have companies looking for people in his field. He's kind of sort of right and kind of sort of wrong. Um, the Career Center has somebody who's really engaged in ID success, and that's me. I work a lot with industrial design students. An industrial design student a lot of times is going to have to briefly explain what it is he or she does, uh, whether it be user experience or product design or distribution, something like that. There will be jobs that that student can find, but, I'm, but I also show them how to find jobs if they're not finding employers at career fairs and how to reach out directly to those companies. Industrial design is, is a building force. It is a growing, growing major, a growing industry. So I think your student's probably right where he or she needs to be. Great, great. And um, I'm pretty sure the answer to this question is yes. So I'll just answer it for the sake of time. Does College of Engineering have its own separate career fair? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Several. Yep. There will be several. My student plans to apply at a company website uh, apply on the company website of a company that may come to the career fair. How should the student connect the dots to get the opportunity? Uh, take a look a couple of weeks before a career fair, see if the company's coming. If so, make a point of going and standing in line and talking to the recruiter and show, show the recruiter your resume. Make certain when you apply that you make it a two-step process that you don't just upload your resume but that you also have a great cover letter to go with it because that's critical for success you can do it one of two ways i tell students to go ahead and apply if they want and then find the people at career fair or you could wait until career fair talk to them and then apply afterwards if they've already applied previously should they let the recruiter know that hey yep. I've already applied? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, show what you're interested in. Be able to tell them why you applied, what job it was, and what skills you have for that job. Recruiters are also going to be thinking at any career event about what other opportunities they're going to have. There might be something that's not currently advertised, listed, posted, and a recruiter will know about that. Um, if a student is interested in getting a full-time job after graduation in a particular city or state, do you have company contacts in different cities that, that can help point them in the right direction? Uh, yes, you can. In your search for jobs on CareerBuzz, there is a geographical condition that you can use, so you can specify what areas you want to work in. And then, of course, do some research. Find out what companies are where you want to be and what those companies are doing. Do first years have a better chance of getting a research position on campus for the summer after their first year as opposed to an internship with an employer? <sighs> depends on the research, depends on the major, depends on the skills with the student. Uh, I would tell that student if they're interested in a research assistantship and also interested in an internship, they should pursue both of them simultaneously. You're great, that's a good point. Um, do you see any internships for music uh, majors at Georgia Tech? And uh, they did not appear to be any companies at the recent job fair. Uh, there can be some. I, I will tell you music major, Bosch hires a lot of people. And companies like Bosch hire a lot of people. There is a lot of work going on and not just home theater, but the sound design itself. So there are a lot of jobs. If you want to take it to a little bit more technical area, you can try finding that. But Bosch hires a lot of our students. There are a number of companies. I'm not able to think of any right now that are like Bosch that will do that. Yes, there are jobs, but you're going to probably have to pursue them, do some research, begin with a simple Google search and start finding these companies. Then you end up reaching out to the companies if they don't have a listing. 
And um, if my student isn't necessarily a uh, extroverted person, uh, do you all have like sessions to kind of help them beef up their interview skills and just show personality and things of that sort? That is what I do. I give everybody interview tips, opportunities to rehearse, to practice, you know, this introduction. Um, I have to tell you all, I've been workshopping a lot of students for a lot of years. Probably you can tell by the way I talk today, I'm pretty much an extrovert, but I never worry about introvert versus extrovert. The formula is going to be the same to introduce yourself, telling people about your skills. And, and so the only way to get good at it is to do it. Okay, thank you so much for that. And you talked a little bit about uh, salary negotiation. Briefly, if you can kind of touch on that some more and just like if to kind of give parents some tips or some things to kind of help their student with salary negotiation, because uh, you know parents can't necessarily attend the session, but just some things that you kind of touch on during the, the little session or whatever, um, if you can kind of just touch on that. Got your interest, did I? <laughs> now, people get interested in that. All right. The way you argue for more money is simple. It's going to be through concrete details. If a job posting says, I need somebody who's been using Python for two years, but you can prove to me that you've been using Python for the past three years in class projects, that means you've been using it for three years. Um, a company may be interested in somebody from the very first day who could do this or that. Well, you've interned, which means you can do this and this and this and this for them. OK, that means you have more. Uh, also, students can check sources. We have a source on our website. You can look at Glassdoor about finding out averages for, you know, ranges for certain positions. They want to check that. And so you end up making your argument in black and white in an email, thanking them for the offer. Tell them you're excited about going to work for them, but that you have questions, have issues. And so you set it out in bullet form. You're looking for somebody who can do this. I can also do this and this and this. You want somebody with this many years. Well, I have this many years. You're offering 67.5, but Glassdoor shows me that really it's supposed to be 72.5. So then you would counter based on all of that. And yes, and I tell students not to get greedy. And if, if they've already internship at the company, how would you in a, like a sentence form, how would you eloquently say, like, hey, I've had internship experience. I would like to request this amount. Um, point out what you did during your intern experience. Remember, all of this is rooted in concrete detail, everybody. You can't just tell someone I deserve more money. You have to prove it and always it's through concrete detail. So you've interned for the company. Take a look at the job posting. They need somebody who can do this and this. Well, as an intern, you've got the insider information. So it means you can do this and this and this and this. That's how you set it out. Great. Thank you so much, Michael, for sharing that. Now, I just thank you to all of the parents who, and family members who have attended. We got up to 110 uh, attendees so kudos to everybody for taking time out of their schedule um, michael do you have any last words or remarks that you would like to leave with our parents and family members as they get ready for the winter break no such thing as too soon everybody everybody can start their preparation now encourage your student talk to them about it assure them that, that yes they have more skills even than they realize that's what i do in these first year workshops help students get in touch with all of those skills. If you have any questions, of course, you can find me. Look on the website. My last name is spelled L-A-U-G-H-T-E-R. I always tell students that it's not unusual for me to help a student from his or her first year through their last. I will be happy to help. I can give them guidance, things like that. But what I always instruct parents is simple. Equip them with everything, lead them to the edge and push. Great, great. Thank you so much, Michael. That's great, great information, great advice. Um, parents and families, please know we, we know we uh, covered a lot of information today. Today's webinar will be recorded uh, and it will be posted on our website within the next 24 hours. Um, 
And so please be on the lookout for that at our website, parents.gatech.edu. Um, under the Stay Connected tab, under virtual recordings, um, we'll have this posted. Um, and please feel free to go back and watch. We had a wonderful webinar yesterday um, talking about mental health and well-being and welcoming your students back home for the winter break, for the extended winter break, which will be, I think, uh, roughly six weeks or so. Um, and so we had some great information, some great tips, um, some things to be on the lookout for, because it's, it's, it's an unusual time for students and parents and family members. And so please feel free to watch that recording. It's posted now. Um, and so we'll have this one posted soon. And, but thank you for attending. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for engaging. And thank you, Michael, for taking time out your schedule. We had a great time. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.